What's going on guys, Icebreaker here. Been playing front lines now for a few days and it's safe to say I've played quite a bit. <laughs> um, been playing with some friends and stuff on and off stream. And I think we found a couple of little strategy ideas that work really well and I wanna share them with you guys. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? Okay, so for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna assume that you've actually played a bit of front lines or you've at least seen somebody playing it so that you understand what you gotta do. You've gotta capture points A and B, hold them both for 10 seconds, and then you win. You gotta kill the other troops and destroy the buildings and their defenses and stuff, right? So I've got most of the, well, I've got all of the cards locked up to HQ7. I'm gonna be using two key troops in particular that I think work really well together, especially if you're playing with a team. If you've got a couple of friends um, who you've squatted up with, this works even better. Okay, so for the first part of this strategy is, it's all about being fast. If you can get spawned in and get to point A or point B with friends, other players, bots, whatever it is, with you as well, uh, get to point A or point B uh, as fast as possible. And I found that using the assault character to do that is kind of my go-to because he does run pretty quick. You can watch him, uh, he tends to lead out front gets to point B there pretty quick. And, and you can start playing defend then. You're not playing uh, offense. You're not trying to take it while it's being heavily defended by loads of troops. If you can get there first with your team, you can play defend instead of trying to take on all those troops and possibly defenses and stuff as well. And not only that, you're building up the circle as well. So it's all about being quick off the line to start off with to get into that position where you are in control of point A or point B while it builds. Okay, so moving on a little bit more from that, if you've got to the point where the other team has already built their tower, maybe you've died a couple of times and you're respawning in, uh, if you can get a longer ranged troop that outranges the defenses and stuff, then that's your guy you want to be going to. For me, that's the fire bomber uh, troop. Now he can stand way back in the distance and throw these little things over, like over the water, over all the troops. You can actually throw it past defenses straight at the core in some in some cases. So he is ideal for getting to the point where you can get into position with a couple of troops, maybe a heavy and a sniper. The sniper's there to uh, pick off the troops, um, get a medic and a heavy. Obviously the heavy's there to soak up the damage and stuff. But if you can get a medic there as well, keeping you healthy, then you can literally stand way back out of range of all the defenses and shoot straight over the top of all of it, straight at the core itself. And then as soon as the core pops, you can make your push, push your way into the base and get on that point A or point B, whichever one it is you're fighting over at the time. I found this to be really effective. Not only does it take out the defenses for all the other team players, but it also draws out the players in the other team, draws those those guys out of the defense and away from the defenses it makes it easier for them to be picked off. Okay, so the next point is, is when you first spawn in, um, you got the option there. Sometimes you get the option to buy a power up straight away. Um, I found personally that not buying the power up when you first spawn in is actually better because then you can get to point A or point B, um, start defending any of troops coming in, rack up as many munitions as you can, which is the, uh, looks like the GBE symbol from the original game, Boom Beach, but it's the blue thing up in the corner that uh, you use to buy the power-ups and stuff. It's called munitions. The more times you shoot troops and stuff, the more troops and stuff you kill, obviously you're gonna earn more and more of that. And the idea is, is to rack up quite, rack up enough that you can build two or three defenses each in your squad so that as soon as you built that tower, you can literally just run around and, and smash up all of the defenses so they're up and done and then you can make your, your advance onto the other uh, point A or point B to um, try and take that one on. And if you die on the way, then you obviously respawn as the fire bomber and go after the defenses so that the rest of the team can push in, like we've seen just a minute ago. It's just a way of helping ensure that your captured points stay captured for as long as possible while you go off and try and catch theirs. Um, we found this to be, it's found this to work really well. Even if you sort of wait a couple of minutes and let one or two waves of those troops come at you, just so that you can take them out and build up a whole bunch of munitions to build those defenses. It does make a big difference. The other advantage of having all of these defenses and stuff built is you can sometimes manage to lure your your um, opponents in to the base. Obviously, as they come towards you, you back backwards. As they chase you, they come into range of all, the hot, all of the uh, flamethrowers and sniper towers and all that kind of stuff. You can see this tank here uh, fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And straight away, the uh, flamethrowers on his case and the sniper and that stuff. And yeah, 
it did end well for him, put it that way. So you can uh, lure those troops back into the base and get more damage on them, get defenses doing their job. Let's talk power-ups. If you're into the point where the battle is really fierce, the long range tactics aren't quite working properly, you can't get coordinated with your team or whatever, um, or you find yourself turning a corner and there's a whole big bunch of troops um, stood there waiting for everybody stopping all the advances. If you can grab something like a barrage or super airstrike or the normal airstrike, what I'd call this is the dead man's party. If you think like a dead man's grenade, that when you die, you let go of the grenade and it blows up whoever was there. Same sort of thing with this. If you're uh, if you're being taken on and you've got an airstrike, just as you die, if you run into the middle of the troops, that airstrike will be activated and it will rain down on them after you, even after you've been taken out while you're respawning, which quite often either takes out a whole bunch of troops or it will disperse them enough that your team can mount an effective push into those points and split their team up. Uh, this next one's kind of the same thing as that, except this one is you'd be purposely running into the middle of it, not just waiting until you're more or less dying. Um, literally just run into the middle of a group of troops and just press the airstrike and let them take you out. But in, the, in that process, you can see there that they all split up and they spread out, keep them away from um, point B where we were on that one. They had to move back away, which gave time uh, for my teammates and that to get back to that point and continue with that push. So that one's like more of a kamikaze style uh, airstrike flame the flame bomb the ability flame bomb thing um that thing is really underrated and if you drop that on top of point a or point b you can guarantee that the only troops that will go anywhere near it are the bots i don't have a clip of this one but you know the uh the shield generator the one that puts a ring up around you if you stand right in the middle of point a or point b right there where the flag is and literally just as it's about to complete and build the building, use it. You put the shield around the actual tower itself for a few minutes while that thing dies out like they do, but it will protect the uh, building as well. So give that one a go. Think about what's gonna give you most value. As you're respawning in, think about what troops you're gonna use. Think about how many munitions you've got. Can you afford a power up? Will it help? Or will it help saving those munitions to build defenses? One last thing, I know people are gonna scream pay to win, but the boom pass, worth every penny. What it does is it boosts your cards to your HQ level. So if you've got a HQ five, but your fire bomber is only uh, level three, the boom pass will boost that card to level five to be the same as your HQ for the entire season. So it's an absolute no brainer to, to get on that. Plus you get all of the extra rewards I know people are going to cry about pay to win and stuff, but whatever. And when it comes to using gems, I would personally say save your gems for the mega crates that you can buy in the shop for 60 gems and save them for buying uh, coins to upgrade cards later on because the, the upgrades get quite expensive. And those, those mega chests, those mega crates and the uh, coin deals from the shop are perfect for helping you along the way with that. Um, 60 gems for, for the amount of cards you get out of one of those mega chests is well worth it. That's pretty much it right now for sort of strategy. Give it a go, guys. You let me know what you think. If you've found another strategy that you think is working really well, by all means, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to try it out. And if, yeah, if it's good, then we'll definitely be making a video on it. I'll give you a shout out for that too. For this one, guys, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to uh, use our code, create a code BBTFRG in the, uh, in the game shop. We really do appreciate that. If you found the video helpful, entertaining, bit of both, smash that like and subscribe, guys. I'll see you next time.